Ms. Mahi has cleared the zonal level synergy competition of MISA, members of International Schools Association. She has cleared the level two round of the National Astronomy and Science Olympiad. She has been awarded a certificate with special mention for displaying exemplary skills of research, leadership, and diplomacy at BCG MUN 2022. She has also played the role of chairperson in the executive board for Interhouse MUN conducted in her school for the year 2023-24. With that said, we welcome Ms. Mahi to come on stage. A very good evening to one and all present here. Before I start, I would like to take a moment to thank my school and Terex Youth at CNMS for giving me the opportunity to vocalize my thoughts on this platform. It is with profound privilege that I speak here today. Uniformity is not nature's way. Diversity is nature's way. Today, I, Mahi Ketan Kotaria, will be talking about nature's wealth the biodiversity and its hidden treasures. Let me start off by telling you what biodiversity is. Now, I'm sure all of you have bought mobile phones at some point in your life. And if you have, you probably had to download a software to use that phone. And then you probably ended up downloading a myriad of useless apps. And think about it. This very purchase to begin with must have allowed a lot of other businesses to thrive because you probably ended up buying a SIM card, a mobile cover, a screen guard, a charger, even headphones perhaps. Well, biodiversity is much like this economy when you buy a new phone. The phone itself represents a central species or element in the ecosystem. Once introduced, it creates opportunities for other businesses to thrive. Software engineers develop apps and vendors start selling mobile phones and chargers and whatnot. Similarly, in an ecosystem, the presence of one species supports the survival of many others. For reduce, let's take the example of corals. Corals provide shelter for fish, shrimps and crabs while these creatures in turn help keep the reef clean by eating algae which could otherwise smother it. Tiny algae called Zeus and Thele live inside the coral providing it with energy through photosynthesis. And the coral in turn offers the algae with nutrients and protection. This mutual support creates a thriving ecosystem where countless species depend on one another for survival. This demonstrates the very essence of biodiversity, the intricate woven connections of life. So let me explain how the nature's palette works. Well, I'm not a science student, so explaining biodiversity in layman's terms required some serious thinking. And then it hit me. Since my brain's more wired for commodities and balance sheets than it is for biology, why not break it down using the one thing I really understand? Business, of course. Who knew that ecosystems and startups had so much in common? Well, except in an ecosystem, the only shareholders' meetings would be between the ants and the flowers. No, but really, try hard jokes aside, just as businesses rely on a diverse range of suppliers to ensure steady production and to minimize disruptions, an ecosystem depends on a variety of species to maintain balance and function. If one link in the chain fails, it can cause a ripple effect, impacting everything from food webs to climate regulation. In fact, did you know that the consequences of loss of biodiversity are far greater than that of climate change or pollution? Let me take a wild guess at what you're thinking right now. Why is it so important? What is the big hype around biodiversity? Allow me to take you back to a moment in my childhood. I was around eight years old 
wandering through the forest near my grandparents' house with my grandfather. That's when my grandfather stopped and knelt down beside a small, unassuming plant with purple flowers. He looked at me and said, Mahi, this plant has cured more people than you'll ever meet in your life. I was baffled. How could something so small, something I had nearly stepped on, hold such power? That plant, I later learned, was a source to compounds used in life-saving cancer treatment. Medicines, ladies and gentlemen, over 50% of modern medicines are derived from the nature. Aspirin, it comes from the willow bark. The Madagascar periwinkle, hidden in its delicate petals, are compounds that have revolutionized the treatment of leukemia. In fact, survival rates of leukemia have boosted from a mere 10% to whooping 90% after the discovery of these compounds. And it's not just medicine. Did you know that one out of every three bites of food that you eat depends upon pollinators like bees and butterflies, which, believe it or not, are on the verge of endangerment. Or, if these facts weren't mind-blowing enough, let's talk about the axolotl, or the Mexican walking fish. This creature isn't just cute, but it has extraordinary regenerative abilities. It is known for being able to regrow whole limbs, spinal cord, and even parts of its heart and brain. Scientists are studying these abilities in order to unlock secrets of tissue regeneration and healing in humans. These aren't just fascinating facts. They are evidence that nature's ingenuity surpasses anything we could ever invent in a lab. Say, have you heard of biomimicry? Biomimicry is the practice of looking to the nature for solutions to human problems. Let's take the example of the Swiss engineer, George the Mestrel. George noticed how tiny seeds stuck to his dog's fur after a walk in the woods. This made him wonder how the seeds attached themselves to the fur. He later mimicked this very design to create Velcro, an innovation which is now used in everything from shoes to spacesuits. Isn't it awe-inspiring just to be thinking about this? Nature holds a treasure trove of secrets, many of which we barely begin to uncover. Over millions of species out there remain unknown to us. Hidden gems indeed. However, here's the heartbreaking truth. This vast treasure is slipping through our fingers. When will we realize that the real wonders of the world aren't the monuments we build, but the life forms we share this very planet with? Yet, how very often we overlook them. Today, biodiversity is in grave danger. Scientists warn that over one million species could go extinct within the next few decades. All because of our actions. My actions and your actions. Now, you might not believe this, but ladies and gentlemen, lend me your ear nonetheless. In 2023, approximately an area worth 10 football fields of rainforest was being destroyed every minute. This rate equates to the loss of around 3.7 million hectares of rainforest over the year. This destruction is driven by our actions, of course, be it industrial and agricultural expansion, fires, pollution, population growth, and a plethora of other reasons we could barely fathom right now. And unfortunately, this damage isn't just confined to our lands. Our oceans are suffering just as well. Here's something else that may surprise you. Over 10 million tons of plastic ends up in the ocean every year, entangling marine animals, causing poisoning, eutrophication, and even destroying our natural habitats. You know what? Let me make this simpler. Allow me to paint a picture. 10 million tons of plastic would end up in the ocean if a garbage truck full of plastic were being dumped into the ocean 
every minute of every day for an entire year shocking unbelievable even but it is a sad truth we treat biodiversity like a luxury instead of the necessity that it really is instead what if we treated it as an investment yes you heard it correct as an investment what if pharmaceutical companies funded rainforest preservation because the next billion dollar drug might as well be hidden in the depths of a forest this brings me to the big question of the day what can we do about this problem well in my opinion it is quite simple the real problem lies in phrases such as say water ban plastic be eco friendly these phrases have become so pervasive in our daily lives that we often dismiss them as empty slogans saying to ourselves what difference could i truly make or why does it matter if i toss one wrapper in the ocean it's not the end of the world to this i say sure go ahead it's not like any of our lives depend upon biodiversity for air food and water i'm sure netflix and a good take out order and concrete jungles and plastic oceans will sustain us just fine when our planet collapses look i know it is true that individual actions may seem insignificant in the grand scheme however the real danger lies in collective apathy if everyone were to adapt this mindset it would only serve to hasten the degradation of our planet small individual actions may seem trivial but their cumulative impact their cumulative power has the pow- sorry their cumulative impact has the power to drive meaningful change always remember small individual actions may seem trivial but they are still a step towards securing a future rich in biodiversity of life this brings me back to the question what can we do the answer is simple we can start start with restoring and protecting our habitats by building conservation centers for endangered species by reducing waste and pollution or by adapting a hundred different ways to reduce our carbon footprint we have the power to create a world where nature thrives and not just survives the hidden treasures that i've spoken about today aren't buried in the amazon or hidden under a rock they are right here in the soil beneath our feet in the trees above our heads and in the very air that we breathe if we lose these treasures we lose ourselves too it's like losing pages of a book that we haven't read yet chapters that hold answers to questions we don't yet know to ask if we don't act now we may never know what we've lost so let's not rob the future generations from getting a chance to unlock these treasures with that i take your leave thank you very much